uh, and I would like to share my experience with Dapper. And uh, the presentation is about the refactor legacy applications to cloud with Dapper. And I would like to uh, mention that the uh, stress here not about the refactoring uh, refactoring applications itself, but refactoring to be able to migrate them on cloud, like there are two different uh, like uh, meanings. So in this presentation, I would like to share like uh, my experience and the best practices, how to do that, how to refactor legacy application. So the agenda is uh, simple, uh, general uh, intro about the business case. Uh, then we'll go to the dapper uh, details, like concepts, components, and in the end, um, I was planning the uh, like uh, show the real uh, live demo, and but probably it will be shortened, shortened because uh, just a couple of days ago I was resigned from the AWS account. My project is ended, so I'm not able to access my AWS account and Kubernetes as well. But anyway, definitely I will share the I will share the code and explain uh, the details. Now about the business need. Uh, so. Uh, our business need like was to develop steps and I would even say the solution, how to speed up migration of the monolithic uh, legacy application to the microservices, uh, to the cloud. And the business goals actually uh, are like refactoring to the cloud with the highest ROE, return of investment, speed up refactoring process itself and uh, one, constraint was like, uh, don't buy into the specific cloud provider. So the client with this solution uh, can easily switch from one cloud provider to another. Definitely, uh, this is like, uh, maybe not a really big chance that uh, when customer choose a provider, then in a year or two, it will uh, like change it. But from my real experience, I, I saw that like client change the providers even uh, once per year. Some provider uh, offers a better pricing uh, scenario. And this is, this is the major reason for the business to just go to switch to the well. And also uh, a few more constraints. Uh, we are mostly interested on the refactoring uh, Java-based applications, but it's even not a case because Tupper is cross platform language and it doesn't like uh, relate in any case with it. I would say it's language agnostic. It doesn't care about the language application written. And also during this business uh, need, uh, the, we should consider only the free tools because business don't want to pay more. And uh, like on this picture, we see that we have hypothetical case uh, on premise you have the monolithic application and with, with maximum time and less effort to uh, migrate it to the cloud microservice. Uh, yep. And here I would like to say that with minimum valuable effort. So we are not con concentrating on rewriting the service itself, but rather uh, make them possible to migrate and uh, like host on the cloud. Uh, so like uh, a few words about the general uh, approach is like uh, when people migrate the like service to the cloud and like uh, three most common use strategies. There are five like uh, in general, so uh, two more, but I uh, decided not to include a strategy like rewrite everything from scratch, something like that. So first one is lift and shift, and uh, you probably heard about that, that it's really simple. Just uh, take the virtual machine with the running application and move from the on-premise to the cloud, and that's it. And definitely there are some pros, like no code uh, or architecture changes needed. You just migrate in the entire virtual machine well, uh, migrate, uh, like pain migration is really fast. It's just migrate the machine itself and no need to change anything. This pros. And regarding the cons, definitely, well, you when you migrate the application, <laughs> uh, simply like uh, not application, but moving the instance, it 
doesn't take full advantage of the cloud itself. Yeah, because you're just using the EC2 container and that's it. And late, latency and performance as well impacts increased risk because you need to check sourcely, tune that machine. And so. The next one is a refactoring uh, strategy. It's actually modifying the application to better support the cloud environment. And like from the long uh, term perspective, is the most cost saving because like you are a factor application to deploy uh, uh, on the cloud and uh, like use cloud advantages. And uh, the cons actually are vendor routine because when you're migrating uh, the application to the cloud, definitely you bind to some cloud specific services and definitely it's a time because uh, you have to change the code and skills that people uh, should have some knowledge and like uh, to work with a specific cloud set. And the last one in that I consider it is a rep platform. It's actually moving the application to the cloud without major changes. I mean, the adapt uh, application just uh, for the cloud uh, native, like with the minimum efforts. So it still uh, uses the cloud, it, it still consumes the cloud services, but with minimum. And definitely the pros are cost efficient. The, you spend the less amount of uh, money to make it possible to migrate uh, cloud native functionality you're able to use. Uh, so, it's some one uh, close to the refactoring, but uh, with the minimum efforts and uh, maybe less usage of the uh, cl cloud native functionality. Uh, but the cons uh, work scope can grow because you start refactoring and then you realize that you have uh, like uh, to change z that one uh, part. Uh, you need to change this one. Automation is required. So. Something like that. And like for our case, we choose the second approach uh, because the business loves highest ROE, business loves money, and like it gives the it, it gives the uh, from from the cost perspective the most uh, attractive uh, solution. Uh, and one more thing that we would like to address actually. Vendor lock-in, because as I mentioned before, the, one of the business needs was not to bind to specific cloud provider. There is a framework that uh, we uh, like uh, consider to use uh, to speed up our, our migration, and like uh, actually, uh, this list consists only one third of all possible alternatives. But here I highlighted only like most attractive for us. Uh, the pros and cons, I added here only like uh, some major advantages or like cons that we use to reject this uh, option. Like uh, frameworks uh, Dapper, and uh, it's a really cool one, free support Java SDK, supported by SNTS uh, uh, community, uh, then uh, Sprint Cloud function, uh, we are talking about the function, Sprint Cloud function, the same uh, free uh, many advanced adapters for the cloud, for different clouds, Java base, etc. Then uh, we uh, uh, we uh, instigate the Flogo architect, AWS SAM, serverless, and in event mesh, and they were just rejected for different reasons, like uh, Logo was a Go land based and uh, business need was just uh, for people who know the Java. The next two are actually supports only AWS, so they speed up uh, migrating on AWS, but uh, and that's it, no other cloud providers. The next one, serverless is non free, event mesh also was attractive, but it's incubating, so. We didn't want to put uh, the migration on risk. And our uh, we choose actually Dapper because it's a portable event driven, uh, provides a 
building blocks to migrate the application to communicate application uh, also it doesn't uh, depend to the specific cloud so one of the best options here is a comparison itself that uh, like dapper uh, together with the spring cloud actually our winners and uh, like uh, Dapper is event-driven, cloud-independent, uh, free, support Java, stable, etc. And like the uh, Spring Cloud, as well, has uh, like many advantages, and uh, also support Java. But uh, Spring Cloud function supports only Java. Dapper can be used even with the many SDKs. Uh, like if you have uh, like many services and you plan to migrate the services. Uh, written the different languages, so Dapper probably is the best case. Yep, and even during the migration, you can use the Spring Cloud function together with the Dapper, so no any uh, conflict, you may use it just together uh, to address the different like questions. So why Dapper? Well, first of all, about the Dapper itself, it's a distributed application runtime, and the main advantage is offers a building uh, APIs uh, to like communicate with the services. So benefits like uh, build connected uh, applications faster, uh, provides uh, APIs for solving distributed ch application challenges, uh, best practice supported by cloud native, actively developed, so has a uh, whole list of benefits. And also it supports the major cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, Alibaba, I guess even ABM, and many more. And uh, also it supports uh, many uh, general components like uh, relational databases. I listed only a couple, but you may uh, add uh, all, almost all databases, relational databases. It also non-relations like MongoDB, uh, uh, document DB, whatever, and Redis is a cache, message brokers like Kafka, RabbitMQ, whatever uh why dapper is so cool because you don't need to change the code itself definitely you have to write the uh, dapper uh, code to communicate uh, I don't know where I, where I was disconnected probably on this one just change config okay so let me uh yeah let me uh, share yeah so uh -huh, yeah we, we were talking about the uh wide upper and that supports many components so let's go further and uh, why it's so cool because it does require a lot of uh code efforts so once you uh, uh, write the code to communicate like service with service or with a um, with a message broker using the Dapper API, that's it. And actually, this uh, like by using Dapper API, we like uh, we are safe uh, with the vendor login. So, changing vendor or service itself, it's just a matter of the configuration. Like in this case, like we. We are using, let's say, message broker uh, SNS SQS AWS, and we decided to move to the. Uh, we, we decided to move to the Kafka, and what we just need to change the Dapper config, just change the type, and definitely change the metadata setting. Like for the uh, SNS SQS, uh, like we need the credentials, probably secret key, uh, access key, uh, topic. For the Kafka, we need the message brokers, uh, like uh, the same. Uh, authentication method, specify topics, etc. So that's it. And no any other changes in the code at all. So a couple words about the uh, Dapper architecture. So Dapper like works as a sidecar. So it's mean it uh, you don't need to 
uh, add any code, uh, like uh, additional code to uh, make it, uh, to make uh, Dapper running. You don't need to install Dapper. Uh, Sidecar architecture has all advantages and uh, benefits are it runs outside the application process. So it doesn't affect the application process. It's a small, uh, lightweight, uh, a Dapper client. It also uh, provides a really small communication latency between the Dapper client and the application itself because it's run running on the same virtual machine. It just right, run side by side. Also, uh, Dapper uh, provides a monitor. It can help with monitoring the system resources as it runs on the same virtual machine on the same uh, process processor. So, like a few words about the Dapper uh, concept. Uh, it's a like uh, it provides uh, many benefits, and I just highlighted the major of them, like uh, resiliency. So, it uh, provides a capability for defining and applying fault tolerance policies. It's a timeout, retry circuit breaker and you don't need to care about that what you need to care only about your service about your application and then uh, communicating service to service through the dapper actually dapper handle this like if some na uh, network uh, latencies dapper uh, use a timeout strategy like to call service one more time or retry strategy or if the service uh, fall down permanently, it, like uh, don't call the series, but just applying the circuit breaker uh, strategy and uh, rejecting the, the request uh, immediately. It also provides a health checkpoint and Dapper can uh, monitor your application uh, for health check if uh, Uh, looks like uh, we have issues with internet. One more time. Uh, so, uh, a couple words about the observability. Uh, Dapper is uh, like uh, open telemetry protocol, so like uh, it can be easily integrated with a modern monitoring system like Grafana, so it's not a big deal. A uh, few words about the security. So Dapper is all about security and like uh, while using the Dapper for, uh, for service communication, you don't need like to actually think about security because Dapper covered it uh, perfectly. It uses a mutual authentication TLS. Uh, so I know, uh, should I like uh, say a couple words about the technology? It's uh, well known, so supports two way authentication, uh, encrypts the channels. So really cool and uh, while using the dapper you you don't need like even to think about the security and now about the dapper services uh, itself so it like has a uh, five services and uh, one important thing the dapper uh, can be hosted uh, uh, in the self mode or on the Kubernetes, and like some of them are used only for the Kubernetes. Like uh, Dapper, uh, Dapper D is actually the main service, and it uh, runs and exposes on the separate process. It actually runs uh, aside the applications to Kubernetes or in the self hosted mode as a process. Uh, Control plane actually it's uh, updates and provides Kubernetes service endpoints. Also, uh, 
it periodically uh, like checks for the pods uh, and like handles its stuff. Uh, placement control panel, it's like specific, it's just for the dapper actors uh, component. Uh, then NEP uh, control uh, plane actually handles security across the uh, uh, Dapper clients and services generates uh, certificates, spread the certificates across the uh, Dapper clients so they can communicate with each other. And the last one, actually, uh, a sidecar injector control panel. It scans for the Kubernetes deployments, uh, check for the specific annotation, and if yes, it uh, creates another. Uh, container in the pool, so Dapper runs uh, aside your uh, like uh, aside your application in, in the same pool, if you're talking about the Kubernetes. So Dapper is not a service mesh. So while Dapper provides the same feature like uh, mutual uh, TLS, resiliency, uh, metrics, tracing, but Dapper mostly uh, concentrating on the uh, providing the built-in blocks uh, to uh, uh, like speed up, uh, like to, uh, to connect the services, like service invocation component, publish subscriber. We'll talk about them uh, soon. But uh, the goal of the Dapper actually provide building blocks. Why? While the goal of the service ma uh, mesh, excuse me, is uh, managing communication between services. So one more time, Dapper. Uh, manage the communication between the services. It's done for you, so you shouldn't care about that. But the main goal of the Dapper is actually provide building blocks to uh, like uh, communicate the service. Uh, now about the Dapper major building blocks. Uh, so like a few words there are about n of them. I uh, here I specified only seven or eight, and uh, I uh, decided to concentrate on the ma major ones. So service-to-service -service invocation, it actually allows uh, uh, service communicate uh, to the service via HTTP or gRPC uh, protocols like binding. Uh, it's in, uh, allowed to invoke uh, external services through the Dapper uh, APIs. It also allows uh, your application to be triggered uh, by some events from the outside. Publish subscribe. It's actually common, correct? It supports the publish subscribe pattern in the application state management. Uh, it's working with the key value uh, states. Uh, secrets, uh, probably a self descriptive that uh, working with the, C with, with the secrets support many uh, secret managers and configurations. Now, about the each component in more detail. So, uh, first one service service invocation. So, it supports uh, communication through the HTTP HTTPS or GPRS if you need, like, the uh, uh, latency is really matter and uh, you want to decrease the latency uh, as uh, more as possible. And it uh, actually uh, solves the following uh, uh, problems like service discovery. So you don't need to think about how to organize the service discovery like for your service if you like have multiple services and how to connect how service A should connect to service B. Like you don't need to think about the registry discovery. Just uh, that would just uh, do it for you. Definitely, you when you uh, start the service, you have to start with the configurations where you uh, specify the service name so Dapper can uh, bind uh, your service. It also standardizes the APIs calls between the services so uh, Dapper communicates with each other, I mean, and you don't need to worry about what if your service uh, communicate on uh, like uh, different like protocols. Uh, secure communication already talked uh, also uh, provides a, a resiliency techniques like retries, timeouts, uh, and 
uh, also provides the uh, observability interest and traceability like uh, to get the metrics what's going on from uh, with your service or with the dapper client itself a uh, few more also about the binding it actually avoid complexities so it's benefits like focus on the business logic you don't need like to think about the dapper details uh, you also don't need uh, to include the specific cloud SDK because you just need and, and and the seed handler tries whatever. Uh, there are two types of bindings like input binding when you handle the events from the external uh, source or uh, outputs you invoke the external source and like sends events publish subscribe uh, probably uh, it's a common approach Like allows to communicate with service through the uh, sending receiving also uh, at least uh, once guaranteed delivery I mean, of the message uh, bulk uh, uh, receive uh, dead letter queues everything that uh, that actually is the best practice of them uh, of the message blocker so dapper supports it uh about the state management uh, the same uh, provides APIs to save read and query uh, uh, key value pairs so it uh, uh, integrated with redis supports many caches uh, databases so like uh, supports multi reads multi writes a uh, few uh, couple words about the secret uh, management APIs and configuration api so uh, regarding secret management support uh, major like secret provider like aws secrets manager uh, google cloud secret manager uh, i know key vault so uh, here the feature is a uh, configure secrets without changing application code. You just need to use the dapper as the case and see it. Limit access uh, to the secret. So you may configure in the properties who can access which secret. And about the configuration APIs, it's uh, similar uh, to the state uh, management. So it just uh, with single difference that it allows only the read values, not the write. Uh, now about the uh, covered cases. So I prepared the demo, uh, live demo. Uh, but as I mentioned before, uh, I'm, I can't connect with my it was count since my project is ended <laughs> but anyway i can sh share the call so here is a uh, covered cases with a dapper scenario so let's go let's switch back uh, to the id and let let, let us uh, uh, check the first case service to service invocation so uh, i prepared the services and each service actually has a uh, deployment files i'm using helm to deploy them on the kubernetes uh, in automatic way and uh, let me share the first case yeah uh, for example service a want to communicate or like call the service b so like what let me increase the phone one second So uh, what we need just uh, uh, the code uh, first, like Dapper client and invoke method, where we can pass, where we should pass a service name. Uh, in case of invocation, uh, the method and additional uh, arguments. So let me show how it works. Like in our case, uh, service name, yeah, component get all. So let me open the service component get all. Let me. Oh, 
component get all. And let me open the first uh, Kubernetes configuration. This is our simple service running on the HTTP and here is deployment, nothing special. Yeah. I mean, we have here we like to be able to uh, run the Dapper uh, uh, Dapper sidecar. What we need first to just to add the Dapper annotation, like the enable Dapper ID of the application port, uh, where the Dapper should listen the application, maybe configs uh, additional information, and like value name. Here is our service component get all. Yeah. So actually here to call the service, we need to specify with inside the invoke methods a component component name, uh, component get all, the uh, mass invoked method product. So let me open the controller. And here is our uh, like request mapping our HTTP pass uh, like product uh, method get to call this one. Okay, product method get additional parameters if like uh, request body, we need to fulfill the request body and uh, just call it. Nothing special, here we get the result is the response, yeah. And we can do with the response whatever we need. The next case is uh, binding. Yeah, let me go to the binding. Yep. Uh, so uh, with the binding, I would like to uh, share the case how to call the uh, uh, lambda function. So lambda function is running somewhere, and this one, the component represents the lambda. Excuse me. It's a component get by name. Component get by name. Let me know. So simple uh, AWS lambda implementation request handler. Now let's go to the configuration. Self, the per binding we specify the type. Uh, let me open the value. Yeah. So the type, uh, how, uh, how we will uh, 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 call the service. So it's through the HTTP, and this is the URL of the Lambda functions. It's up and running. So really simple. And uh, here, yeah. Specify the component name, the that maps to that URL and the uh, type and the operation name. Like we are going to call the uh, post nest. Next, let's go further and like publish subscribe case. Let's cover uh, simple uh, publish event. Service name as a topic in this case, uh, pass the payload if we want like to pass some some data, and probably uh, metadata we may specify multiple parameters in this case, just uh, detail time, like specify in seconds, in milliseconds, I guess. Seconds should be one. Yep. Uh, let me check a new L component add to new, so let me open that. Yep. Pops, uh, yeah, uh, dapper pop sub yaml, in this case, we are specifying the uh, details for the AWS SNS SPS topic, like secret key, access key, uh, rollover key, Whatever we need, and like this is a simple uh, Helm, uh, excuse me, config, uh, Kubernetes config uh, to connect to the uh, to that component. Uh, let's go further. Yep, state management, the same, uh, still uh, easy. Let me close additional. Tabs, not to confuse it. Yep. Yeah. 
let's scroll in this one. Uh, big transfer. Here is a, a different case with big, big transfer. How to transfer big like payloads? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, state the same. Uh, we have like to create some uh, state like PID value, additional parameters like a tag. Uh, to speed up the search, uh, state options, it allows like type of consistency, uh, event, eventual partial, some type of the concurrency, additional details, and uh, just say to the state, uh, probably uh, like even uh, may use a, a bulk uh, save, like say multiple elements. Now about the state itself, uh, let me share details. Yeah, so here is we specify the state store and uh, state store actually represents in our case ready. So let me open the Helm state, state stores. Yeah, ready state. Here is the name mapping by name. I mean, uh, here here we specify the configure. I mean the element. In our case, uh, state store name, and this one is representing that state store. So it's a Redis. Uh, it's a Redis details like host uh, key values or additional parameters. So it's easy. And let me share one, probably the last one case. It's a secret management. It's the same, really easy. Uh, what we need, a state store, secret store. This is similar to the state store, but we deal with a secret. So it's encrypted, safe. And here we specify the AWS parameter store. Probably should be somewhere here store AWS parameter store and the details like uh, the type uh, the credentials and what is a uh, cool that we can easily like if you would like to change that store for for something else what like all changes that we should perform actually are in the config files here we change uh, a, a AWS store to the for example uh, Azure Vault and just change the type, change the meta, met, metadata, and, and that's it. Uh, so the code uh, remains the same. No, no need like to change uh, this part at all. And the last one thing, configuration is pretty similar to the state. And the last one note that uh, Dapper is really cool. It allows to do a lot. It uh, offers the APIs, but it is not a silver bullet. Why? Because uh, like uh, it uh, it supports really easy the more useful components. But like if we want to bind or like integrate with something that are not so uh, fresh or uh, or not so new, then probably we need to do more coding. I mean, spending more time with configurations and it's not uh, always optimal. So Dapper works pretty well with uh, uh, mostly use the components. It uh, like with a, uh, with, with a uh, excuse with the message brokers, with the containers, uh, like with the param stores. Uh, but if we want to configure, like perform some really thin configurations, then probably uh, we like D Dapper uh, can't help us with that, like uh, with the uh, super tuning, then. Dapper, unfortunately, like at least Dapper is uh, evolving. Uh, people, uh, developers, uh, updating the APIs, and maybe in some near future it will like uh, support uh, more components uh, and allowing the uh, tuning the components. 
So that's it. My side. Thank you for the attention. Thank you. Mikko. If you have any questions, I'm ready to answer. <laughs>